Well, hi, my name is Greg and welcome to another chapter in my series of YouTube videos uh, covering my 1949 P3 Rover restoration story. Uh, you're now watching chapter 18 in the series. Um, however, this chapter really is more of a continuation from chapter 16, uh, where I began covering the reassembly of my car uh, after I'd had uh, extensive uh, rust repair uh, completed and, and the painting completed on the car. Um, so in this chapter, I'll cover uh, some early priorities in the reassembly process, uh, but also uh, quite a bit of remanufacture of uh, parts as I go along. Uh, I'll be covering work that I did on uh, the front and rear uh, bumper bar support brackets uh, on the bumper bars themselves, uh, on the guys which sit inside the doors which guide the window glass. Uh, I'll cover work that I did on uh, the check straps which limit how far the doors can open. And lastly I'll cover work that I did on remounting the chrome horns which um, sit at uh, the front of the car. They'll be my usual uh, problem solving sort of format and explanations of why I went about doing the work in the way that I did uh, and ongoing examples of my uh, tendency to, to find excuses to make things, uh, particularly if I can make those things using a machining process. Uh, again, I hope you find uh, the video of interest and informative and I hope to see you uh, towards the end of the video. I was really keen to see the car back in green, so to speak, uh, so I asked the body shop to give me a call after most of the spray painting had been done. Uh, so I took these shots uh, in the actual spray booth on the day. It is really good to see the boot lid uh, looking this good because there's just so much work put into that boot lid. Would you believe I'm watching the paint dry? Uh, this shot would have been taken back in June 2019, uh, so by this time I'd had all the work done uh, that I wanted to get done at the restoration workshop uh, out at Mount Barker in Adelaide Hills. And I was just doing the final preparation to uh, get the car ready to bring back home. You can just see the bracket that supports the rear bumper bar on the floor here. And I was contemplating fitting it, but then as I looked at it further I sort of figured that it needed quite a bit of work before it was uh, fit to be fitted. So working on this bracket was one of the early jobs that I did after I did get the car back home. After getting the car home, my biggest dilemma was really to figure out what to do first because there just seemed to be so much to do. Um, so I started work at the back, uh, not for any particular reason, it just seemed to be a place to start. Uh, so I refitted the fuel tank, uh, the rear lights uh, and, the, and the badge that goes on the boot just to help things look a, a little better. Uh, and then I began work on uh, the brackets that support uh, the front and rear bumper bars. Uh, the reason I wanted to work on those was uh, I, I still had the, the bumper bars to re-chrome, uh, so I wanted to get those brackets sorted out, uh, refit the unchromed or the yet to be re-chromed bumper bars, uh, make sure everything sort of fitted all right before, uh, before, before sending the bumper bars off for re-chroming. Now uh, getting this rear bumper bar bracket back into shape turned out to be one hell of a job. Uh, I think the car must have had more than its fair share of uh, uh, bumps and bingles in the past and uh, so this bracket seemed to be out of shape in every conceivable way. Um, and it was quite a bit of work to actually get things back into shape because uh, the bracket was made out of spring steel. Uh, so every uh, bend or rebend back into shape that I wanted to do I had to heat up the steel with a blowtorch and then, and then bend it. So this photo taken quite early in my restoration project uh, gives you a bit of insight into the problem that I had. So if you look at the right hand side bumper that's sitting higher than the left and also both uh, bumper bars are sitting uh, at a bit of an angle particularly on, on the left hand side. And this photo taken a fair bit further down the restoration track you can see evidence of the bumper being pushed into the guard at some point. Uh, dropping off the front and rear bumper bars for re-chroming on this day which was pretty exciting because uh, the bumper bars were the very last bit of chrome work uh, to be re-chromed. My next trick was to get the brackets and the number plate supports uh, ready for powder coating. Had to do a bit of weld repair here first but otherwise it wasn't in too bad a shape. The heavy bracket that sits there in the middle is a bracket that supports the fog lamp. Uh, there's a couple of bits missing though, there's a couple of little spaces that sit in front of that heavy bracket which uh, I had to make and they look uh, something like this. And uh, here they are after I'd turned them up from stainless steel. Uh, brackets back from the powder coaters now so I'm just having my first go at refitting them. 
I'll just explain what I was trying to achieve with all the mucking around with the bumper bar brackets. Uh, overall, what I was aiming to get uh, was uh, the bumper sections sitting equally distant from the, the guards on both sides uh, and the bumper sections sitting level uh, and also equally distant from the, the number plate uh, bracket. I was pretty happy with the end result. Uh, next job was to clean up the accelerator linkages and cables and also the housing that the fuel pump is mounted to. I'm um, just continuing getting everything ready for powder coating. So here are the same parts back from the powder coaters uh, and also the casting that I cleaned up. Um, would you believe I found uh, yet another machining job. There's a little bronze bush that uh, fits in that casting. Uh, so I machined up a new one because the original was pretty worn out. Uh, the next job was to work on these guys that sit inside the doors. Uh, so these are the, uh, I'd refer to them as guys that fit inside the, uh, the doors. Uh, so this one goes on the driver's side door and basically acts as a guide for the window glass. Uh, and then you've got these two uh, for the back windows, uh, which aren't in too bad a condition. There's just a bit of surface rust, uh, which I think will blast off okay. Uh, so my plan is to send these away for powder coating. So the first part of the process will, will be to, uh, to blast them. Uh, and then they go through the powder coating process. Uh, the problem I've got is uh, this one on the uh, passenger side front uh, is quite rusty. Uh, so I think if you, if you were to blast that, there wouldn't be a lot of steel left afterwards in, in a few places. Uh, so I've decided to sort of repair this one. Uh, so I've had a, this sort of channel section. I've had that made up uh, by a little uh, metal uh, workshop here in Adelaide. Uh, that does uh, sheet metal bending. Uh, so they've done that for me uh, and then I'm salvaging the useful bits from it so I've, uh, I've used a, uh, a spot well drill to uh, drill out uh, this bracket that fits on the end uh, so I'll salvage that and fit it to my new piece of steel um, and then on this other end there is a fitting that I've removed and already taken apart uh, so originally I went together something like that uh, so in the first instance I've uh, drilled out the spot wells and removed it and subsequently I've cut out this section of steel which is quite rusty. Uh, I've retained this side section for now uh, because it gives me a, a profile. Uh, so I've cut this little piece of steel and shaped it to fit as best I can. Uh, so I'll, I'll weld that in like so. Uh, but having this side piece here gives me a, a profile that I can uh, just uh, perfect the bends on this piece. Uh, so I weld it in and then once it's welded in I'll cut this section off and then uh, re remanufacture this side section as the second uh, part of the process. And uh, here I have a few shots as I uh, completed the rust repairs on these parts. Uh, so here's a finished job. Uh, I've got my new piece of uh, channel section here. Uh, and I've salvaged uh, the original bracket uh, on the end and welded that on. And uh, I've also salvaged, uh, I guess, part of the original bracket at this end and, and welded that on after cutting out a, a rusted section there and, and repairing that. I haven't been too fussy with you know, grinding the welds back all the way. Uh, this sits inside the door and you never get to see it anyway. And keeping a little bit of uh, extra weld on there just makes it a little bit stronger, I think. Uh, so I'm quite happy with this uh, and this little part is quite significant in a way because uh, I think this actually represents the very last bit of rust repair uh, in this restoration job. It really does feel like the uh, completion of rust repairs on this uh, project is uh, worthy of celebration so here we go. Well enough of that, uh, so here are my uh, window guides uh, back from the powder coat is looking uh, quite nice. Uh, next I'll cover some of the challenges with uh, remounting the chrome horns. Okay, the task I set myself today is to uh, uh, do a bit of final fitment work on the horns. Uh, so one problem I have is I've started to mount them, uh, but one of the uh, tapped holes uh, on this side uh, seems to be stripped, so I'm going to have to take the horn off uh, take that sort of mounting plinth off and, uh, and, and insert a helicoil there. So here's my little uh, helicoil kit for a quarter BSF uh, helicoil. 
and then as I come to the other side um, for some reason this horn sits lower than the other side uh, too low um, so what I'm going to do is uh, make a, a packer uh, so that it sits at more or less the same height as a, a horn on the other side just focusing in on the passenger side now uh, so if you might recall I did uh, I had a strip thread so you can see that helicoil on uh, I actually ended up uh, uh, fitting a helicoil on both sides and here I have my almost finished uh, packers for the horns so this is on the driver's side um, I had to make quite a thick packer so the, the next step is to get this painted green in, in body colour uh, I had to, I don't know if you can see it too well on here, I had to actually machine a, a bit of a taper on there as well on the other side now I've got the, the, the packer that I've made uh, for the passenger side, see so quite a bit thinner uh, but when I actually mount the horns now they both uh, sit at the same same height and same angle uh, so everything looks um, symmetrical I have my little packers uh, back from the paint shop now so uh, time to uh, have a go at refitting the horns and uh, see what it looks like went together quite nicely and uh, now for the other side Both horns refitted and looking really good, even if I do say so myself. The chrome horns really enhance the front end appearance of the car, I think. These are the door check straps that restrict how far the doors can open. I had one missing and also one of them uh, is not an original Rover part as far as I can tell. Uh, so my solution was to set about making my own replacements. I could have bought uh, some sort of one size and style fits all type of replacement but I wasn't really that happy with that option. Well here are three of the four check straps that I've made. Uh, today I'm just going to go into the final part uh, of the sort of whole assembly. I need to make a little pin that will go through um, the hole on that end and, and retain the strip. Uh, so I'll just go into a bit of detail on, to, on, on that. Uh, so here we are in the car. Uh, so this is obviously one of the rear doors. You can see my check strap here. It's got the, the rubber buffer on that side. Uh, and here is where it uh, is attached to the door. I've just got a, a, a little pin in there at the moment. Uh, it's actually a, a rivet. <laughs> uh, which sort of brings me uh, to what I'm talking about today. Originally this was riveted. Um, uh, so they would have had a rivet that sort of bound in in that bracket area. Uh, I'm not so keen on that, on that idea because then the only way you can get it out is to drill the rivet out. Um, so I'm going to uh, machine a little stainless steel pin uh, with a, a little groove in the pin uh, for a spring circlip uh, as an alternative way of uh, fastening it. Uh, so that'll be a little pin that I'll make that'll go in there. So this is my first attempt at uh, making a little retaining pin which will fit through the check strip like so and also through the, the little bracket on the door and the idea is I'll put a little washer on and then a spring circlip uh, as you can see here. Well the task now is to make three more of these pins so to help myself out I made a very rough drawing. I used a 3 8 of an inch diameter stainless steel and I turned the sort of pin section to uh, 5 millimeters because it was easier to get to 5 millimeter circlips. So I've ground this uh, little high speed steel tool to, to do the, the little groove. Uh, so I've just ground that to the width of the groove that I want uh, and then I'll do the rest of the turning uh, just with a, another high speed steel tool bit there.
here my ready to fit uh, check straps painted them body colour looking very pretty. Well that works quite well I think. Well hi again I hope you enjoyed uh, chapter 18 in this series. I will just give a bit of an overview of some of the videos that I hope to get out in the not too distant future. Um, so I'm working on videos that cover more of the reassembly, uh, videos that will cover uh, work that I've done on some of the timber refinishing. I mean so far I've, I've refinished the timber dash and the timber trim at the front of the car and also uh, I hope to get a video out covering the rewiring of the car which I've almost finished now. Uh, it has been challenging to get uh, material together in a timely fashion for these videos. Life's been pretty busy for me. Uh, so apologies for that, uh, but hope to get chapter 19 out soon and I will see you then.